Check two. Welcome back to the channel and today I am telling you all you need to know about the Martin Rose SS20 collection. Now Martin Rose is a London based fashion designer. She has also been a consultant for Balenciaga and she actually came up as a part of Fashion East. If you want to learn more about Martin Rose or Fashion East, um, I've made videos about both of those things so definitely check those videos out in the description below. Martine Rose's aesthetic kind of takes inspiration from rave culture and her childhood in the 80s and 90s. So when you look at her past collections, you normally see a lot of references from rave culture, from the businessmen that you would see in the 80s, and kind of just the aesthetic of the 80s in general. And that's why Martine Rose collections are so recognizable because the aesthetic is so distinct and it's very easy to see. Now for the collection in question, which is the Martin Rose Spring Summer 20 collection, this collection was a commentary on British politics. It also showed references to her past childhood and the different British subcultures and characters you would see in the 80s in Britain. So just based on the show notes, we know from this collection that it is inspired by the London of the 1980s and the melting pot it was. I've listened to Martine Rose interviews in the past and I've watched her speak and talk about her past and her childhood and a lot of the time she says growing up in the 80s and Clapham Common you'd see different subcultures, different types of people um, they would all meet in places like Brick Lane to buy food or to buy clothing, vintage clothing and she said that she really loved that despite the class differences and the different types of people from your new romantic to the office worker to the Rastafarian to your just average rave person to the football hooligan and the football fan that ultimately all these people would meet all these different subcultures and types of people would meet in one place and there would be no discrimination there would be no problems and everyone would just live in unison together I think Marty Rose is trying to live a pastime with her more recent collections and this really shows through how she's trying to bring these different subcultures and characters to life in a lot of her collections and this collection is no different. So now we're going to look at the different characters that were in this collection and kind of break them down and I'll kind of show you what they look like. Now the first character we'll be talking about is the football fan or in other words the football hooligan and this can be seen in looks 9 and 16 mainly. Now in this collection we actually saw something interesting, we saw a logo and this logo was a capital R and it had a circle around it. Now obviously this is probably a Martine Rose logo that she's working with, she's playing with. But what makes this really really interesting actually is that the inspiration of this collection is from the 80s. And now you might be wondering, what how is that relevant Io? How is that relevant? Well in the 80s, the 80s is kind of the start of the digital age and that was when we started seeing um, a lot of the big and most well-known logos from the Apple logo to the MTV logo and because of the digital age a lot of brands use the logo to kind of push a certain message and logos in the 80s looked a certain way and because that was also the rise of the capabilities of digital design more logos were easily made and that then gives us the 80s that was full of logo mania and logos were everywhere everyone was wearing logos in the 80s so it was quite interesting that in this collection we saw some pieces that had logos all over them and then all over print. Now to some people they wouldn't get it because they just think uh, that's just tacky, there's just logos all over it. But when you look at the, the reference and how this collection takes references from the 80s, you see that Martin Rose is a genius and it's all about the little details in these collections that make them so good. In this collection we also saw a couple of Nike pieces. Um, so that would be my guess that this Nike collab um, I'm actually wearing one of the pieces right now uh, with Martin Rose is actually ongoing so we might see a lot more Nike collabs with Martin Rose and I'll be looking forward to all the collabs I'll probably buy some stuff so yeah the next character we'll be looking at is the average office worker and this can actually be seen in looks 3, 33 and 34 mainly and these characters were kind of wearing suits nothing really too out of the ordinary apart from maybe Martin Rose's boxy tailoring and silhouette and it's quite funny because Martin Rose is known for having a very boxy silhouette but if you look at the 80s that's kind of the silhouette of the clothing anyway so this goes back to how almost Martin Rose's whole brand and her design ethos comes from the 80s and how clothing looked in the 80s and how 
people dressed in the 80s. Now, Martin Rose has described the average looking office worker of the 80s as the type of person that looked pristine and sharp by day, but possessed a wild alter ego that only emerged at night. So obviously what I take from Martin Rose's description of the everyday worker is they're professional, they're smart, they look smart during the day, but once the nighttime comes and they get a couple of drinks after work and they are crazy and they're probably the biggest ravers. The next characters we'll be looking at are probably Martin Rose's favourite characters and these are the seasoned ravers. The ravers who always go to all the raves and all the parties and clubbing is their lifestyle. And these can be seen in looks 15, 23, 26 and many others. Something that actually gave the character of the seasoned ravers away was the fact that they were wearing the quintessential raving sneakers and these are the MX 90s. Now, I don't know how many of you are actually from London or the UK but you guys know a white sneaker, especially a white Nike sneaker, especially a white Air Max 90 is the ultimate raving sneaker. That's the sneaker that every raver beats up. It's either those or white Air Force Ones. So this gave it away that yeah, these characters were meant to be the seasoned ravers and they have more appropriate clothing for the rave as opposed to loafers and smart shoes that let's say the new romantic would wear or the average looking office worker. What's funny is these characters aren't new. These are characters that have featured through many past Martin Rose collections and I'm sure these are characters that will continue to feature in future Martin Rose collections as she almost always takes inspiration from her childhood growing up in the 80s in London. Now I've talked about the different characters that existed in this collection but now I'm going to get into more of the political references and the political side of the collection. Now in this collection there are actually t-shirts that featured a clown surrounded by 12 gold stars and there was also a text that said promising Britain. Now this has many different meanings and I'm definitely going to get into it. So first, why 12 gold stars? Now if you didn't know, the logo of the EU, so the European Union, actually has 12 gold stars. It's a blue flag with 12 gold stars around it, like in a circle. So obviously, so clearly, the reference on this t-shirt there's a clown, there's 12 gold stars around it, and there's a text that says Promising Britain. So what that's telling us is Martin Rose is saying that how the state of politics in the UK right now is a joke. And kind of, this is shown through our Brexit negotiations that is currently going on in the UK, and how, how horrible those negotiations have been going. And I also think it has many other references. There's also a reference to going back to the 80s where Martin Rose kind of uses these characters to show how so many different subcultures and types of people all live together in unison. And I think she misses that. I think she thinks that the UK is going in the wrong direction, now we have Brexit, and there's many things that are happening in politics in the UK right now that are more divisive than bringing people together. And I think Martin thinks that in the 80s, when she was growing up, in the 80s and 90s, um, these kind of, this rave culture and this party culture that used to happen in Clapham Common, in Brick Lane, all over, all over London, um, it brought people together, it brought different types of people together. Now even the statement promising Britain could have two different meanings. It could either be um, kind of like a play on how in the UK we were promised certain things in the Brexit negotiations. Um, that didn't make sense. Not to get too political, but people like Boris Johnson were tricking people saying that we spend 350 million pounds on the EU and he's saying that why can't we spend it somewhere else like the NHS? And a lot of people got tricked by things like that and then voted for Brexit just based on that. Whereas they weren't considering, okay, but if we don't pay 250 million to the EU, uh, we're gonna have to negotiate for trade deals and all sorts of other things and sort out so many things by ourselves and that 250 million kind of disappears. It's not just gonna transfer from us using it on the EU to us using it for NHS. And a lot of people were tricked by that. 
So I think Promising Britain could be a play on kind of how many promises our government made and didn't follow through with. Um, but Promising Britain could also mean that in terms of Britain's promise itself, like we thought we were going to have a Promising Britain, but Britain isn't as promising as we thought. It could also mean despite all the chaos, she thinks Britain is promising and we do have a promising Britain. So it could have many meanings. And yeah, this is just me looking too deeply into it. Um, but that's where the fun comes into fashion. And of course, we saw the Marty Rose staples in this collection from the flare trousers as usual to the tracksuits, you know, the rave uh, references and the clothing and the vintage looking aesthetic of a lot of the clothing, the boxy silhouettes, the exaggerated shoulders. Even what I'm wearing has exaggerated shoulders. Those are the Martin Rose staples. We always see them and we saw them again in this collection. We also saw a lot of pieces that were kind of like crinkled and they look rumpled up. And actually in an interview with ID Magazine, Martin Rose actually said that the resin treatment on shirts, denim and leather pieces that left them crinkled encapsulated the feeling of things being slightly undone and slightly ruined. And this is going back to the political references that did exist in this collection and how she's kind of used these crinkled shirts to encapsulate how things are undone. Um, our Brexit negotiations aren't finished and things are kind of ruined because things like Brexit uh, are making things more divisive in the UK instead of bringing people together. In summary, what I think this collection was all about was Martine Rose basically saying, in chaos, there is hope. And she was able to show this through going back to her childhood and showing how all different characters from her childhood all live together in unison and live together happily. And some of the pieces, um, they were actually badges and the badges said good things ahead and magic things ahead. And this shows that Martin Rose isn't just a pessimist, that Martin Rose does have hope and she is optimistic about some parts of the UK. And like I said, when there's chaos, there's also hope. So her saying magic things ahead and having pins that say that on the pieces shows that she still has hope for the nation despite all the bad things that are going on. All right, guys, so I'm just editing the video right now and I realized I left out something really important. And what it is, is if you look at the models, their hair was really messy and they had very smudged makeup and their makeup was really messed up. And this was kind of an idea of things being undone and the chaos in society. And that's kind of what it was a reference to. And obviously it ties into this because this collection is all about politics and the mess of politics right now. So I thought that was really interesting to add because I left that out by mistake because um, ultimately people might be wondering why is their hair like that or why is their makeup like that? I really like how she's used her past and the different characters and references from the 80s to kind of artistically have a commentary on today's state of politics. And yeah, I think Marty Rose is a genius and I really love this collection. Um, the reason why this is the first collection I'm covering is because no one has actually talked about this collection, which I don't understand why. So yeah, stay tuned for more. Um, I'm definitely going to review my favorite collections from London Fashion Week, then I'm gonna move into Milan and then Paris. Tell me what you guys think about the collection. Comment down below what your thoughts were on the Martin Rose collection. Make sure to like this video, subscribe if you're new. If you're already here, turn on your post notification so you get notified when I post a new video. Shout out to High Fashion Talk because I wouldn't have been able to go to London Fashion Week without High Fashion Talk. If you don't know what High Fashion Talk is, it's uh, one of the best groups period for fashion and it's based on Facebook. But if you want to learn more about High Fashion Talk, they actually were featured on ID Magazine. So I'll leave the link to that in the description below and you can check that out. And last but not least, for some weird reason, I had a live stream, I had a live stream a couple of days ago and some people said they wanted to donate money so that I could afford to improve my live stream setup. Um, so I've set up a PayPal me um, I don't know why you guys want to donate to me, but um, if you're part of those guys, I won't say no. So, yep, the PayPal me will be in the description below. And on that note, I'm out. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you like the collection. Fashion is subjective, so some people won't like it, some people will. Um, but either way, I do appreciate um, people being very artistic and having deep references um, when they're releasing clothing. And it's something I can always appreciate. But on that note... 
Thank you for watching and I'm out. This was in 1989 and I was nine years old and my cousin Darren was really, used to go to Camden Palace, rain dance, all of that shit. Anyway, I used to watch them ready, get ready to go out and wish I was part of that world. But on the Sunday, they everyone used to come back, all the kids used to come back from raves and they used to congregate on Clapham Common. So Clapham Common became this like after party. Everyone was still buzzing off their tits, not ready to go home. Is it still around right now? No. <laughs> Clapham Common is, but it's a different place. <laughs> it's a different place, yeah. I don't get it. So it's like a big park, okay. you know. And then, so the kids used to come back and everyone, Clapham Common became this like, like un, um, uh, what's the word? Unofficial after party. Everyone used to pull up, open their car doors, play music and carry on dancing. Eventually it got so big that, that vans used to drive on and like sound systems used to set up. And this was very unofficial. So I used to go after church with my nan because it was on the, per <laughs> on the park. So it was like my nan, my aunt used to go down, put out a little blanket, they go down and, and kids were like literally off their tits dancing. And I remember one particular thing and I spoke to my cousin about it the other day. There were, and there was like ex-football hooligans there. P people who you would fucking cross the road, skinheads, football shirts, like made a wide berth. They would be eat up, you know, dancing like mad next to a ruster, next to like, it was just, it was, it was, I, I the energy for me was like, it actually makes my nose go a bit fizzy because I feel a bit emotional <laughs> about it. But it, like, it was, it was, spiritual. it was spiritual. Yeah. And I remember dancing, with this guy and I was nine years old. I'm not I'm not joking. And this Rasta, he had like